Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television is sponsored by Nutrien. Nutrien, feeding the future. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Perspective. This is a public affairs presentation of Florida Gateway College. My name is Mike McKee, and my guest on the program, really excited to have the, some of the cast of The Wizard of Oz, which will be performed later in June here at Florida Gateway College. Uh, we're going to talk with them about the play. We might even get them to sing a song, if we're lucky. But uh, we'll continue our conversation when we come back. Don't go away. Jeff Foxworthy here. You know, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. Well, thing is, there's a lot more to say. Like if you've ever found yourself burning yard debris and then walking away, well, you might be starting a wildfire. So for the love of the outdoors, go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Welcome back to Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television. Also like to welcome the listeners to the program on WQHL Radio and WQLC Radio in Lake City, Florida. We appreciate you tuning in and listening to the program. My guest on the program, Todd Siff, he's the professor, he's a professor here, but he's also the director of theater programs at Florida Gateway College. And we have with us two stars of the upcoming play, Wizard of Oz. We have Ryan Perez on the far end, and we have Maria Herrera. And guess who Maria is? Maria is Dorothy, <laughs> and uh, Ryan is the Tin Man. Welcome to you all. Thank you for being, being here. It's really exciting to have you guys here, and it's exciting to have live theater, a lot of live theater here at Florida Gateway College. We've had a lot. Thanks for having us. Well, and I wanted to talk about this, this play because everybody knows this. They either have seen the movie, which, was a, which is still shown on television today, it was uh, filmed in 1939, uh, and, yeah. and it didn't win an Academy Award because that year, Gone with the Wind won the Academy Award. So, I mean, here you had two Goliath movies uh, that competed against each other, uh, and either one of them could have won an Academy, or, you know, either one of them should have won the Academy Award for Best Picture. But, again, uh, what made you decide to bring Wizard of Oz here, besides the fact that everybody knows it? Sure. I, I think it's a story that, um, like you said, Mike, everybody already knows a little bit of. And the story is really about someone searching for what they value in life, which is family and home. And I think that's something we all can relate to, to some extent. And so the reason I chose the show was because I think, A, since we already know the story so well, and because of that intention of everybody can use more of that idea of value of family and value of home. And that's what Dorothy's journey is all about. Well, and the, and the thing about it is if, you're, if your actors have seen it maybe many, many times, I'm sure we'll, we'll get into that a little bit, they know how it's supposed to be done mm -hmm. from a movie standpoint. Right. So they know how the actors, the professional actors did it back in the day and what it should like. I mean, would you say that? that yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I definitely take some inspiration from the original Judy Garland, the legend herself. Um, but at the same time, I've tried really hard to find my own self within Dorothy and kind of put my little twist on her and kind of react the way that I would naturally react to some situations as a young girl, rather than just following the direct way that Judy Garland or any of the other um, women who have done it in the past. Uh, okay, so two questions how do you recreate uh, a tornado because <laughs> you know yeah. you think about I mean they, they did a pretty good job because it was black and white the, if you remember the the original motion picture was black and white mm -hmm. because of the the fact that they were gonna have a tornado and then in the second half here we are in, in color in color yeah I mean t t and, it, and it really kicked I mean the colors were unbelievable back then and yeah. I think a lot of the a lot of the success of that film was, oh my God, they had never Absolutely. seen colors these bright. Yeah, it was one of the first films that actually had Technicolor involved <laughs> in it. And I would say that our version, just going off of what Maria said, our version is actually bringing the story into the modern world. So we're actually modernizing this classic story in a lot of ways too. We, um, in terms of the twister, the tornado itself, we actually have 
um, dance and dancers actually taking place of the tornado. So we have a lot of uh, dancers in the show as well, and we have a choreographer, Kaylin Davis is our choreographer. And um, we have a lot of different dance numbers. We have a tap dance number, we have a ballet, which is the twister, and then we have the jitterbug, which is our big dance number at the end of the show. And all of these dance numbers uh, make basically the show something else. It elevates the show into bringing all these different art forms together, whether it's dance, theater, music. We have a live band in the show as well, which is exciting, uh, including a few students from FGC. Uh, five-piece band. And then we also have an illustrator, uh, Michael Bird, who's also uh, a student from FGC, who's also illustrating all of our backgrounds and set designs that are going to be projected into the production as well. Well, wow, a lot of primary colors. In a lot the of background. primary colors, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, let me ask you, Ryan, uh, what has been this experience, what has it been like for you? <clears throat> well, for me, I've done shows since high school, and I think what a lot of people fall into in theater is as you were saying, there's shows that have been done in the past, um, and you kind of get into the habit of falling into kind of the same way other people did it. And uh, I've always had directors in the past that um, kind of followed that path, and working with uh, Professor Stiff has been really eye-opening for me. Um, he really helps us kind of dig into our characters and uh, kind of identify yourself in, uh, in that character, because that's the beauty of theater is identifying kind of how your life can relate to that show. Um, so it's kind of been a great journey of, of finding ourselves within, within the show. Well, and you know, you may put another little spin on it that, that the original performer or right. any other performers that you've seen do it may have. Right. You may be a really good Tin Man. And for, for those of you who didn't know, you're, Ryan's the Tin Man. Uh, what is your costume like? I, I, I can only imagine is it heavy, is it, or is it we? How, well, how do we do um, it? How do we make the Tin Man? Interestingly enough, Maria's mom's actually our costume designer, um, and she has been bringing in pieces for me to try on. Um, but it looks exactly like some heavy tin, but it's actually uh, created with kind of a thicker foam, so not as heavy as you might think, um, but definitely kind of takes on on that feel. Yeah, I mean, how would you go you'd go to the costume store and I, I, I need a small Tin Man outfit? <laughs> right. you know, yeah. kinda, I mean, I, and I know your mom's not here to say anything, but did you go to costume stores or Halloween stores? No, or actually, is that, I mean, my mom's hand making. Oh, all really? Of, yeah, for the entire show. That mm -hmm. is awesome. We are that's, lucky that's, to have Yeah, yeah you sure. seem like you, Todd, you've kind of put things together here. Yeah. I mean, I, th I believe this is probably the first show where you actually have had a designer that can do backdrops. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes. That, that can actually do uh, costuming. Yeah, I've, I've made sure to find community members from all over the Lake City area that want to participate in theater and to get them involved. And this is a message to anybody out there who's interested in theater. If you're interested in it, come participate in the shows here at FGC. Well, and, and another thing that, that Todd brings to the, the, the table as, as a theater director is that you got all all kinds of behind the scenes stuff as well. You don't have to be that thespian where you're in front of everybody. You can work lights. Absolutely. You can, you can be a stagehand, right? Absolutely. We have students running and community members running uh, backstage work. We have lighting design. We have sound design. We have microphones that we're putting up as well. And and well, let's let's talk a little bit about that because yeah. the first show we we brought, we bought some new microphones that are that are that you wear. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're wearable mics, and that, so there will be a sound system. It won't be just, I mean, what I'm trying to say, folks, is if you feel like you can't hear sometimes in a Broadway or a theater show, don't worry, because that, that problem has been rectified because of this, the system. Absolutely, yeah. I think all the equipment that we've been able to purchase over the last six months has really, really helped uh, the PAC in general, but also uh, the theater program grow greatly. Uh, and again, I, I know from, from the fact that we have a, an entirely new lighting system in that facility, and there are some special effects that can be done with lighting. There's also a new projection system that has been purchased as well to do backdrops. And what, so tell me what's, what that's like. You know, you, your high school plays probably were not as sophisticated as what you're seeing out here. Talk about, did you go to high school here? 
No, I didn't. I went to Swanee okay. County over. Yeah, um, I we did. won't hold that against you. <laughs> I, think, I think another one of your cast members is also from Swanee yeah, County. Yeah, both of them are actually. Okay. Yep. Um, so yeah, at Swanee was when I did my first ever theater production. What, what, of what was it? Bye Bye Birdie. Okay. Yeah, I played the mother, and then Hunter, who plays the scarecrow in Wizard of Oz, was my son, and then Matthew, who plays the lion, was my husband. So we've <laughs> kind of come full, and, full and circle. And just so the, the viewers can't see those two guys, they are, they are coming on the second segment of the program, uh, and, and it looks like we're going to be able to pull off somewhere over the rainbow at the end of the show with the, the most of the cast here. Um, Todd, I got to ask you, um, sure. you got little people in, in the play, um, wh how did you, how do we have little people now? How and do we have the munchkins? Yes, the munchkins. Avoiding the, the word munchkin there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we actually have cast um, children from the local community. We have 17 children playing munchkins in this show, and they're of age 10 to 15 years old. And um, we've had rehearsals with them on Saturdays, and now actually up this upcoming week, they're going to join the rest of the cast. In fact, we actually have 53 cast members in the show. So I, I just want to say that's a lot of costumes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the costumes are are what we can find at home, and okay. we can embellish a little. Well, bit. And again, some of those the lollipop kids. I remember the lollipop kids had overalls on. They they weren't, and some of the 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 like the mayor of Munchkin, Munchkin City, yeah. Yeah, he, he was in a kind of a suit, so right. I guess that would be kind of easy, but... Uh, yeah, it's, the, it's a lot to manage, but I think we're doing a good job of it. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, we're going to take a, a look. We have some video that was shot during one of the rehearsals, and I believe what we're going to look at is the merry old land of Oz. Uh, and let's take a look at that, and we'll come back and continue our conversation with the cast from The Wizard of Oz. Ha, 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 ho, 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 and a couple of tra -la -las. That's how we laugh our day away in the Lundfield land of Oz. Buzz, 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 chirp, 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 and a couple of la dee -das. That's how the great hits can go all day in the merry old land of Oz. We get up at 12 and start to work at 1. Take it out for lunch and then at 2 we're done. Pretty cool, uh, and that's just a portion of what you'll see when you go to the play The Wizard of Oz here at Florida Gateway College. Uh, we'll continue our conversation with some more cast members of The Wizard of Oz when we come back. Don't go away. You're watching Perspective on FGC TV. Hey guys, how are you today? Good. I'm here to talk about how with technology you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I bring the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius, and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job. Welcome back to Perspective on FGC TV. My guests on the program are part of the cast of The Wizard of Oz, which will be going on I didn't even ask you what the dates were. What what dates are we are we having the play out here? We have June 21st, June 22nd, and June 23rd. The 21st is 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, the 22nd, which is Saturday, is 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock, and then Sunday the 23rd, 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock. All right, so you got plenty of opportunities to see The Wizard of Oz. We have with us two more cast members. We have uh, Matthew Strickland, who plays the Cowardly Lion. And we have uh, Hunter Cheney, who has been in several plays, uh, uh, is uh, the Scarecrow. Uh, and I got to get with the Scarecrow first because not only I know him, but I, Hunter, you you've been in different productions. You were in uh, the the last one, uh, Our Town, yeah. Our Town, where you were one of the leads. The Scarecrow plays a big part in this uh, play as well. What's the physicality of this? Has got to be. Not, that maybe doesn't hurt you, but I mean, how is it a challenge going from our town to now someone who's got to dance around and do all kinds of crap? 
stuff? Well, it's uh, it's different because the last show was really no props. It was all pantomime. We did everything ourselves. Here, the scarecrow, he's just all flailing and you're just flying all over the place. It's, it's a big change going from just a normal straight play to a, a big musical number type show. Well, and I got to ask you about, the, are you going to have straw? I mean, is there straw in your costume? Yeah. I know we had, uh, so. we had Maria talking about her mom designing that. How, how did she do the straw for you? I, I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it yet? Nope. Okay. He hasn't well, seen it yet, but I've seen uh, the idea actuated and basically the straw is going to be sewn into the costume and then some will be able to fall out as well. And there are multiple moments in the show where the scarecrow's straw falls out and then Dorothy puts it back in for him. Okay, yeah, and so uh, that, that's going to be kind of interesting to... There's know. also a fun moment where all of his limbs get torn off. Well, and I, so I need to know how you... Maybe that's a secret that we don't want to tell anybody, but uh -huh. that, recreating that, because, I mean, at one point in the movie, the scarecrow was all apart. He yeah. was like, all you could see was his head. You want to describe that moment, Hunter? Uh, let me see the show. <laughs> yeah, so see the show. Um, Matthew, uh, I understand you're from Swanee as well. Right. Uh, yep. You've done this. You were at Swanee High School and you did theater there? I did, yes. What's this like uh, playing, and I'm sure you've seen the movie, mm -hmm. and you've probably seen a, this play before. Right. Yeah. What's it like being in it now? Um, it's really crazy because you kind of, you grow up and you see something, right? Like as a kid, you're like, you watch this movie and it's, it's something that's a big part of your life growing up. You remember all the songs, right? Um, and then you never realize that someday you might actually be something in that you know, performance and it's really cool. I think that's awesome that we're a part of that. Now, did you go back, guys, uh, and look at the movie? Um, maybe when you were auditioning for this? I didn't. I wanted to put, I kind of want to make it, when I do a musical, I want to make it mine. I want to put me into it. So, yes, I remember the parts about what the lion was, how he was a coward and how he was afraid of everything, but I kind of wanted to put my own spin on it, so I don't really want to take any ideas from anyone else. Well, let me ask, I'm going to ask, and we didn't plan this, but right. you remember the line, put him up, put him up? Yeah. How are you going to say that? <laughs> <clears throat> let, me just, let me just hear it. <laughs> you want me to, you want to hear it say it? I mean, you hear me say it? Yeah. You know the, uh, the great actor Chris Farley? Yes. Um, it's going to sound a little bit like that. Oh, okay. I'll put a little aggression into it, so. Ah, put him up! Put him up! Watch one of you first! I'll fight you both together if you want! <laughs> nice. Well, that, that was good. Yeah, thank you. That was good. That was good. Uh, you, you had, uh, I think, a couple of the camera people uh, running the other way. Oh, yeah, they no, should be frightened. That was good. That was good. <laughs> no, I mean, again, that was your take on it. Right. Uh, yeah. And what about you in The Scarecrow? Um, he, was, he was not, he was just... He was most, mostly uh, physical acting. That's he, really he, it. The lines were not as important to him. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is, did you have to work on that? Uh, I kind of play Scarecrow as to if he, he's looking for a brain, but in reality he has one because he's the one that comes up with the ideas. He's the one that comes up with the plans. So really, he's looking for something he's already had, and I kind of play it like as if he's, if he's dumb, but he's smart at the same time. Okay. Well, and uh, you, you've got a song here. I'm, I'm not sure what we're going to look at, but this is part of one of the rehearsals, and we're going to roll that and see Hunter Cheney in action as the Scarecrow. Howdy, Scarecrow! Howdy, Scarecrow! They come from miles around just to eat my field. Howdy, Scarecrow! And laugh in my face! Great. Um, I wanted to, we're going to do another one here with the witch and the scarecrow in just a second, but Todd, um, how is it to manage the big cast? When you have that many people, you've got children, 
Oh, and I wanted to ask you, do you have a dog or is it... We do have a dog. Okay. We do have a dog in the show. Toto? It's, it's uh, Toto, yeah. It's actually a very cute dog. It's uh, a real dog. It's a real dog. It's a real dog. How is so, it working with children and animals? You know, um, very similar. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, the, the dog is going to be a very interesting part of our rehearsal process. The dog has been to a couple rehearsals so far, um, but training a dog is not something I've really done before. Um, so we're, we're learning on the job in terms of training the dog. You know, because the dog plays a, a, an important part of this from, um, I forget, Miss Goat, was it Miss Goat? Gulch. Gulch, uh -huh. and we rode the bicycle with the dog and the yep. thing, and, uh, and Toto finally got away. And the, uh, the dog actually has a lot of stage directions. I mean, it, it opens a curtain at one point, so we're gonna have to figure out exactly how that happens. <laughs> so you got still some challenges to we work on. We still have on. some challenges with the dog, specifically. But to answer your question before, you know, managing a cast of 53, and then we have seven people working on tech, and then we have a five-piece band, and then we have the illustrator who's doing the backgrounds, and then we have people helping out with set and costume design. I, I think really my philosophy about it is to be able to invite anybody from the community to participate and bring their passion to it and find what they are passionate about within the realm of theater so that I can kind of give them free reign to do what they want. I, I don't necessarily direct as if like, I know all the answers and nobody else knows the answers, which sometimes directors get cast that way. Um, my philosophy is I am one person, 53 people is better than one, and let's get everybody's ideas in here together. Well, and, and I'm, I don't mean to speak for you, but I'm, I'm sure if somebody wanted to kind of sit in on a rehearsal or sit in on, on something to see what the behind the scenes are all about, you'd be willing to, to have them come in and, and volunteer. And again, it's not a, not a paid gig. I mean, these, the, the students who do this are, are passionate about theater, and they like performing. Matthew, you've been doing this for a long time. Hunter, you too. You get nervous at all? I mean, I'm assuming the first day of any show, you're right. going to have a little bit of some butterflies. I think um, the nerve works a little different. When you're in a big show, you can kind of use it at, you know, as your benefit. Uh, I always get super nervous directly before the show. I feel like my mind goes blank sometimes. But if you kind of use that nerve to clear your mind and uh, really use it as a superpower almost, uh, it's, it really it's a, it's a benefit. Hunter, what about you? I, I know you've talked, you and I have talked about this before. Is there something you do to prepare to not be nervous? Well, before the shows, we always get in a big circle. And Todd, we do, uh, we do warm up games. You warm up your voice. We do diction exercises. Diction is your enunciation, so you get your lines down. And for me, when it, before the show, I don't really get that nervous. More like butterflies in my stomach of excitement because I'm just ready to get on stage and just get out there. Well, and, and Todd, this is like having a baby, right? You, you're, you're, you're giving birth to the end product, which is a show that you hope everybody will, will like. Sure. So sure. by Sunday, you'll already be thinking about the next show that you're going to do. Yes. And are you, you're not going to announce that today, are you? Um, I, I will preview it by saying this. We are actually going to do two shows in the fall. One will be a Halloween show, and one will be a Christmas show. So look out for auditions for that and for tickets for that as well. Oh, that's, that's going to be awesome. Christmas time is a, is a good time to, you know, I, I go to New York every Christmas, and nice. it's fun to go to see a show or go see the Radio City Music Hall Rockettes mm -hmm. and see that Christmas program. So that's, I think the, the general public will really appreciate that. Uh, tickets are available online. Online. In fact, you probably would direct people to go to the website, go to the college's yeah. website, www.fgc.edu. Or and directly, you can go to fgc.thundertix.com and you can find it right there as well. Yeah, we're gonna, you can see that on the screen, uh, but that's a good, good way to go. You can use a credit card. Uh, but they'll also be available at the door. They will so also somebody, be available at the door do as well. We're going we're gonna to show one more clip of video. This is the witch and the scarecrow. This is Hunter, and I, we don't have the witch here with us today. Krista is her name, Krista Pribble. She's actually a staff member here okay. at FGC. Uh, and so that's, you got to pull that off. You know, witch, you know, being a witch, you know, it's not mm -hmm. always the best part to have. She's anyway, we're going we're gonna to look at this video, and we'll, we'll come back and talk some more with the cast. 
from The Wizard of Oz. I'll turn you into a matchless scarecrow, and you, Tin Man, I'll use you for a beehive. I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> that just proves you don't have a brain. <laughs> Allow me to educate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Scarecrow, wanna play ball? <laughs> <laughs> From what I've seen in just a little snippet, and that's what we're doing here, folks. We're teasing you. We want you to go see the play. We want you to support uh, musical theater and regular theater here at FGC. Todd Siff is the, the director of the program, and uh, he's also a professor out here. And again, he's got some excitement built for this program. And we hope that you will be a part of it by supporting theater here in Lake City at Florida Gateway College. We're going to do. Uh, we're going to have a real treat here coming up next. We're going to have the young people from The Wizard of Oz. They are going to sing "Somewhere Over the Rainbow." We're going to close the show out with that. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Good morning, Uglyville. Every ugly doll is unique. I'm Moxie. Bobo. Wait. Call me Slick Doll. Whoa. And every child is, too. They can be pretty lovable. That's why when you travel, you should make sure your child is in the right seat for their age and size. This is why you're the wisest doll in town. Well, keep them safe by visiting NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Isn't that right, gibberish cat? <laughs> what could be better than Find this? the right seat today. Welcome back to Perspective on FGC TV. We have four members of the 53-member cast of The Wizard of Oz, which will be performed here at FGC. And you guys are gonna treat us with uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. They've, they've been rehearsing it, and uh, let's take it away. upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops that's where you'll find Matt Strickland, Hunter Cheney, Maria Herrera, and Ryan Perez are all members of the cast of The Wizard of Oz. Todd, thank you so much for bringing this creative cast with you. Thanks good for luck. Us. Break legs, uh, or just break one. Uh, <laughs> and good luck, and we hope that you'll go see the play here at FGC. Until next time, I'm Mike McKee. Have a good night.